Plugins and effects here in GarageBand are awesome. They give you an amazing way to add some real flavor to your mix. But what about if you only want to add a plugin to one particular part of a track? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where here on the channel, I like to help you create, record and release your best music. And one of the questions I get about GarageBand the most is how do I automate my effects or how do I add effects to only one particular part of a track? Well, it is easy to do, but it's a bit of a workaround and a bit of a hack like a lot of things here in GarageBand and iOS. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's dive in now. A quick refresher in case you're new to using plugins and effects here in GarageBand. If we tap on the little mixer icon here in the top left, or it'll be in the top right if you're on a smaller iPhone, then we can actually come in here and we can adjust all of our track settings. We can adjust our plugins and EQ, our master effects, and if we tap on the plugins and EQ drop down, we can go into a heap more detail to adjust our plugins and EQ. And I've got a heap more videos about how to use those here on the channel, which I'll link up above and down below. But what we don't have the option in there to do is to actually automate our plugins. So you may be familiar with automation for volume. Once again, there's a video which I'll link, but if we tap and then tap automation, we can adjust the volume of each track, which means that we can make parts of the track louder, parts of the track quieter, which is a very, very handy function. But what a lot of folks are saying is, why can't we do the same for our effects? What if I want an effect to come in in a particular part of the track and then go away again for another part? Well, we can't use automation, but we can use another method that's very simple. Now, I'm currently mixing my new song called six and eight and what i want is in this particular section it goes from a full band arrangement into an a cappella section here where we've just got the vocal and some backing vocals so what i want to do is i want to actually add a lot more reverb and echo and maybe adjust the eq for this section where it's just my vocal standing alone just so that it feels out a little bit more so let's take a listen to what it sounds like at the moment dancing in six and eight time Time is moving on. So it's not too bad. We've got already a little bit of uh, echo and reverb on here and on our actual uh, track settings here for our microphone, we've got some of the delay and the ambience over there as well. So it's all good, but we want to actually change this, but just for this section, just for these two little parts here, which are our a cappella section. How do we do it? Well, we tap on the uh, original vocal here and we're gonna tap duplicate because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a second track here to actually do our adjustment. EQ plugins and effects settings. So by duplicating it, if we come into our plugins and EQ here, you'll notice that these are exactly the same as we had on our original track. So duplicating doesn't duplicate your audio, it duplicates all of the settings on the track. And that gives you a good starting point because what we can now do is these sections that we wanna change, we simply need to tap and drag them down into our new spot. We'll do that again because you'll have noticed that they went out of, if you ever have this problem where you, you drag it and it doesn't line up, just zoom in a little bit more. Tap and drag, drop that section down. We'll scroll across, we'll tap and drag and drop, nope, oh, tapped too hard. If you tap hard, it plays back the track. Uh, there we go. So we've now got this vocal separated out. If we play it back at the moment, it's actually not gonna sound any different. And I'll, I'll show you that now. Dancing in six and eight time. So all it's done is transition the audio from this track to this track. And because they're exactly the same, same volume, same panning, same effects, it doesn't sound any different. But now, and you're probably ahead of me on this one, all we need to do is adjust our effects here and our plugins on this second track. So if we come in here to plugins and EQ, we can do whatever we want here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the threshold of this one a little bit to bring it a little bit uh, louder in the mix, and then we're gonna come down to my visual EQ. Now you can see here my EQ curve, I've got the treble down there at the end. I'm actually gonna bring that back to flat because I don't want quite as much of a, a reduction in treble because I want it to sort of be a little bit airy and come out here in the mix. And the other thing I wanna do is I want to really up our reverb and our echo. Now I'll come back and I'll, uh, I'll play with these settings to make them sound better afterwards, but I just wanted to show you the technique so that you can go away and experiment with it yourself. So now if we go into our plugins and EQ, here's our original settings 
settings that we have on our first track, and then here are our new settings that we have on our second track. So let's now take a listen to this transition part now into our new vocal part. In six and eight time. So you can hear there that it sounds pretty bad. So I've gone a little bit extreme just to show you the difference here. So what I would now do is come back in here and I'd dial some of these back and I'd start mixing it until I got the, what I've wanted, the perfect balance there. So a little bit more of that air in there, a little bit more of the echo and the reverb just to make it stand out so that going from this section to this section is going to be different. And that's important because getting some variety in your tracks, whether it's going from a first verse to a second verse or a bridge section like we have in this track is really important with your arrangement. It can make your song stand out and really pop. So there you go. That is how we can take a original track here and actually change our effects and our plugins on just one part of that original track. And there you go, a simple yet effective way to change the effects and the plugins on just one part of the track. Now, if you've got other questions, comments, or suggestions, or your own tips about mixing and changing effects, and I'd love to hear them, leave those in the comments down below. Oh, and subscribe to the channel because I've got a heap more mixing tips coming up really soon as I finish the mixing process on this song. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We've got two sets of related videos down below if you want to learn even more about creating and mixing here in GarageBand. You can also subscribe to the channel by tapping or clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right or head to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.